Hey everybody, you're watching HuffPost Live. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. I am here with one of my favorite actors in the whole world, Michael Chiklis. But he's not just an actor, he's also a band member, a band leader, a musician, and yeah. a calm down and get off social media advocate. Yeah, absolutely. Can you put that on a business card? <laughs> I don't know that if that would all fit, but you, you put it well. The Shield was one of the most underrated shows in the last 15 to 20 years. Everybody's a big Shield fan. Everyone talks about sure. that. Is that like, do you consider that like your, your career role? Uh, it certainly was the high. It, so to date, it's the highest point in my career. Uh, I, you know, I, I had been playing, you know, really sort of affable, fun, sweet people up until that point, and then it was an opportunity for me to do something that was hard hitting and real and adult and yeah. and really really smart. Got a little and got a little criticism for how hard hitting it was at first. At first, yeah. Well, you know, we were, it was definitely groundbreaking and it really changed the whole entire television landscape. Uh, you know, no one in basic cable was doing anything scripted at that point. Right. And we shocked the world, you know. All of a sudden I had an Emmy in my hand and people were going like, whoa, way ho. Right, you know, how did, yeah, and uh, then the Golden Globe and everything else. So uh, next thing you know, we're, um, you know, every basic cable station is putting out really high quality stuff. It, it, it just set the pick for shows like... Breaking Bad and, and you know, Mad Men and, and the like. You Absolutely. Know. No, it was a game changer. You know, we were sitting in my family, my wife and my two children and I were all sitting in the living room together and we were all like this. And no one was talking. I know that. And thing. my wife went like, really? And she made us all put our thing. And it made me really acutely aware of how much time we all spend alone in a room in yeah. a social scene. We all want to know somebody Anybody, and those kind of lyrics, how does anybody know who I am? This idea of I don't want to be kind of caught in the cyber, what do you call it? Cyberspace. Cyberspace, right? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's so powerful. And I think it's weird because I think what the internet does in some sense, it takes people who, are, who should be close and makes them farther apart, like in your living room. Right. But then it takes people who, are, shouldn't, be, who shouldn't know each other and right. puts them in intimate well, connection with each other. Yesterday, I'm in the plane on the way from Los Angeles. I'm flying at 36,000 feet in perfect comfort with my feet up, eating a meal, and I'm tweeting with people from every continent on the planet. Right. And I said, excuse me, folks, but <laughs> I just have to point out that I grew up with rotary dial. And my <laughs> mind is blown right now. There's no doubt but that there's incredible benefit to this explosion that, that, that is the Internet. But at the same time, you know, there has, we have to achieve some equilibrium, some balance in all of this because it's just been, you know, it's it, it, this tectonic shift in the way that, we interact with each other. Yeah. You know, you want to look at someone. You want to lay hands on them, exactly. look at them in the eye. Joining us right now in the Hangout is Becca Mattaloni, who's a journalism student at Drake University. We also have Jennifer Rauch, who's a professor at Long Island University. John Fitch is joining us. He's a filmmaker. He's in Austin, Texas. We have cool. also Maggie O'Toole, who blogs about social media and culture. She's joining us from Dover, Ohio. And we have Melanie Dion, who is a legal secretary and self-proclaimed Twitter addict from Rockville, Maryland. I think I really started paying attention to it over the last three months, two to three months, when I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm doing this a bit much. It started out as a way for me to promote my blog and then it turned into something else. Um, this past week, I really noticed it because I was rolling on 100,000 tweets. And I was like, oh, I'll do something special and fun for 100,000. Hey! <laughs> What, we're judging you. I, well, well, no, but I just, I, you know, I thought I was overdoing it. I feel better about things now. I think it's complicated because on one level, social media is just a medium. You know, we're still engaging with people the same way we were before. However we're talking to them, it's still about communicating and talking to people. True. But um, there's also an issue with people only post their best and brightest moments on social media. So you don't really Oh, wait, hold on a second. Picture. Hold on a second, though. I've seen some of my friends tweet when they have had a couple of drinks, and uh, <laughs> it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not, you know. I literally, it's like watching a car accident. I had a special circumstance where I was on leave from my job, and I decided that I wanted to take advantage of it to stop using the internet and cell phones for six months. Part of the reason I did that is because I've always assigned my students to do this as sort of, you know, a way of gaining awareness about their own addictions or uh, you know, the influence of media on their lives. 
but I had never done it myself. So I figured this was a good way of, you know, putting my money where my mouth was and getting offline myself for a while so that I could well, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question, and uh, but I'll start with saying that my daughter, my 13-year-old, went to summer camp, and it was it was two and a half weeks, and she came back, and the first thing she said to me when she got in the car was, "Dad, the first two days without the phone, I thought I was going to lose my mind, but then all of a sudden, it was really great that I didn't have that anymore." How was it for you spending six months away from it? It takes a little practice. I mean, it takes some getting used to. And for me, um, coming from a generation where I'm used to not having access to those things all the time, it might be a little easier than it was for your daughter. I find myself, uh, whenever I do uh, plug in, it's sort of overwhelming. And a large percentage of my day is just keeping up to where I feel like I'm being a good user. What percentage would you say? What percentage would you say? I mean, if I was to guess, when I talked to uh, some friends about this this morning, anywhere from 35 and 40 percent of my day is engaging with these social media platforms in what? some way. A lot of my journalism classes, we are required to be on social media and have a Twitter account and post a certain number of times a week. So it definitely is still part of my lifestyle. Uh, I will say it helps me procrastinate my homework and hold on, hold on. Uh, put up for any papers and things, of course. 